So in this video demo, we're going to do a more formal introduction to how to tune a controller. In the last video, we introduced the concept of proportional control and then integral control so that you can actually reach your set point. But there are some nice tuning relations that researchers have developed over the years that make that job a lot easier of getting the tuning parameters just right rather than just guessing and checking. So the tuning parameters that we're going to cover are known as IMC tuning relations and IMC stands for internal model control so it's just a method of tuning a controller there are many of them out there and these seem to work pretty well generally so we're gonna go back to our simulink block where we left off before we had built our own kind of crude version of a controller we're gonna go in and replace this simulink has its own PI controller block so instead of us taking the error signal and then multiplying it by 10 to get proportional control and then integrating that error and multiplying that by our integral gain to get integral control we're going to just use this off-the-shelf simulink block which is called a PID controller which is in under simulink continuous PID controller so if I drag and drop this PID controller flip it just for to make it a little bit more convenient to implement I'm going to go ahead and come in here and delete all of these things that I put on here previously. And I'm just going to plug in this Simulink controller because it has a lot more functionality than those crew blocks that I put together before. So now remember, the input to our controller is going to be the error signal or the difference between our set point for flow and our measurement for flow. So whenever that is non-zero, our controller should be doing something to try and make our our measured flow equal to our set point flow. So if I connect those two here, so now I have my PID controller in Simulink. And now I can go into Simulink, into this PID controller interface, and I can set my parameters here. So I mentioned using these IMC tuning parameters, instead of just guessing what our P, so in this case P, the way that Simulink does this is P is our proportional controller gain, and then I is our integral controller gain. And if you look at the form here, this is actually for a PID controller. So we're leaving off the, the D for the purposes of this class. Derivative control helps the controller have a little bit more predictive ability. In practice, it's generally easier to just go with PI controller because the, when you have a real process, that process can have a lot of noise in it and you don't want your controller overreacting to some of the noise. So just in the simplest terms, um, we just want to stick with a PI controller but you can see this form looks like what we built earlier so we have proportional control that's going to be acting on the error we have integral control which is going to be acting on the integral of the error and if we just set our derivative gain to zero here then this term is just going to go away and we don't have to worry about it so we want to figure out what we should use for proportional and integral so typically if you model your process or approximate your process as a first order transfer function then you can go and find some pretty convenient tuning parameters in our case we have actually modeled this valve as a first order transfer function so we don't even have to do an approximation we have the actual model here so we have a process gain of 0.1 and we have a process time constant of 0.5 minutes so if I pull up these IMC tuning relations this is what we get and this is pulled from uh, Seaborg et al's book process dynamics and control and I have changed these equations to match the parameters that you're given in Simulink that textbook and other textbooks and and many other distributed control systems use all kinds of different forms of PID controllers the form that Simulink uses uses this uh, proportional gain and integral gain and so I've just mapped out what those terms should be so Using IMC tuning relations, we get a proportional gain that is equal to our process time constant divided by our process gain times our desired controller time constant. So one of the nice things about automatic control is that it doesn't, doesn't just help you to reach a set point on some variable in your process. It can actually help you to speed up that process. If you want your process to reach a steady state faster you can choose a smaller controller time constant to help you make that transition quicker so 
a smaller time constant that you pick here results in a larger gain, which means you're going to have a more aggressive controller, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. And again, that's why this is called controller tuning. So let's go back and look at our process. And we have this relation, P is equal to tau over K times tau C. So we're gonna use this relation and we're gonna pick a controller time constant so that P is kind of fixed for us. So our valve equation was, we had 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.5 times S plus one. So here's our process gain. And here's our process time constant. And remember that IMC tuning relation and remember this is specifically for a PI controller where your process can be modeled or approximated as a first order transfer function. There are various approximations you could make and there are various different forms of controller to take. And so the IMC tuning relations are gonna have recommendations for each of those different choices that you make. But we're going with this simple linear first order transfer function as our process model. So remember from our tuning relations in that Word document, our proportional gain is equal to our process time constant divided by our process gain times our controller time constant. So this, our process time constant was 0 0.5 minutes. Our process gain was 10. And this is the variable that we need to pick. So we don't necessarily need to speed up this process, so we could actually just go with a controller time constant equal to our process time constant of 0 0.5 minutes. But again, if we wanted our controller to respond faster, we would pick a smaller controller time constant. So that gives us a proportional gain equal to 10. And if we go back and look at the relation for our integral control action, well that tells us it should be our proportional controller gain divided by our process time constant. So I is equal to P over tau. So if we go back and calculate what that should be, so our proportional gain our proportional controller gain was 10, our process time constant is 0.5, so we should get an I of 20. So the result of this IMC controller tuning are that we get P equals 10 and I equals 20. So now we can go back to our Simulink model and just plug those in for our tuning parameters. So P is equal to 10, I is equal to 20. We're keeping our derivative action at zero and we're gonna go ahead and implement this. So we still have the same scenario where we're making a set point change at time t equals 15 minutes from a set point on our flow rate from two cubic meters per minute to five cubic meters per minute. So using these IMC tuning recommendations, let's see how our controller performs. And as you can see, it performs beautifully. So we reach our set point of two very quickly. When we make that step change in our set point, that's also reached very quickly. So our so our controller is performing very well using those tuning relations. And remember, this is a very idealized case. So let's suppose for a minute that we want to look at um, what happens when we go outside of the operating range of our valve. This is known as controller saturation. So remember, a valve should only have a range between 0% open and 100% open and that should correspond to a flow rate of zero cubic meters per minute to 10 cubic meters per minute given our design here in our initial process model. So remember our inlet flow rate we specified to go from zero to 10 and then we picked a, a valve process model that mapped the change in our flow rate to the change in valve position and that's how we got our process gain. So let's suppose that our controller was asking for a flow rate higher than this. So let's say there's some operator running this plant somewhere and he accidentally types in 15 cubic meters per minute as the set point. 
So what our controller is going to do is it's going to tell that valve to keep on opening, and the valve will keep on opening until it reaches 100%. Once it reaches 100%, it can no longer go any more open, which means physically you wouldn't be able to get any more flow in there higher than the 10 cubic meters per minute. So let's just observe what would happen in our controller if we saturated our valve, meaning we opened our valve 100% of the way open. So first of all, I'm going to go into this PID block, and I'm going to go choose PID Advanced, and I'm going to choose this option to limit the output under this output saturation. So remember the valve can only go to an upper limit of 100% open and it can only go to a lower limit of 0% open. So now we've introduced, we've told our controller don't allow this valve to go more than 100% open or less than 0% open. So if we did that and we made this set point change, if we tried to, if we tried to maintain a flow rate of 15 cubic meters per minute well, we know that that's higher than, the, than our valve can actually handle, but let's just see how our controller responds to this change. So let's make a, a set point change at time t equals 15 minutes from 15 to 2. So we're starting out with a flow rate set point higher than our valve can actually handle, and then at time t equals 15 minutes, we're going to be dropping back into the range of the flow rates that our valve can handle. So I run this process and let's look at the results of the control here. Okay, so you can see we're not able to achieve this set point of 15. We reach our maximum limit of 10. And what's happening here is our integral part of the controller, it keeps on integrating. Remember our integrator acts on the difference between our set point and our measured signal. So if you were to look at the area under the curve, actually the area between this line and this line, you can see that that area stays this finite value, which means our integral, our integrator in the controller keeps on integrating this area, even though the valve physically can't do anything to actually help us get to our set point. So this is called reset windup or, or integral windup. So our, our control algorithm keeps telling the valve to get more and more open, but the valve can't, so it keeps on integrating that error signal. And what you see here is when our set point drops from 15 back down to 2, well, now that integral has built up over this whole duration of time, and now it has to do what's called unwinding. So that integral uh, error has to get back down to 0, and then it's got to start to build up an integral here before our controller actually responds. So what's happening here is that our controller now has this, <clears throat> this buildup of integral control action that it needs to unwind before our control valve can actually respond. So again, this is called controller windup or reset windup or integral windup. And this is a bad thing. If you were running a plant and you needed to make a sudden change in flow rate from 15 to 2, well, you wouldn't want to wait these extra 10 minutes for the controller to actually respond. So what we need to do is we need to have the controller do something a little bit smarter when this happens. So the simplest thing to do is to go back into our PID control algorithm and we're going to go back into PID advanced and as you can see the Simulink PID controller algorithm has a built-in anti-windup method. So this is doing something to prevent that windup from happening. And the easiest thing to do is to select clamping and we're going to click OK. So what clamping will do is once our valve reaches this saturation limit, or once our, yeah, once our valve can't get any more open, the Simulink PID controller is just going to say, okay, my control valve can't do anything else to address this error, so I'm just going to stop integrating. So it clamps that integral signal. So it's going to stop integrating all of this, and we should see a much better response once we run our simulation again. So now with this anti-windup method implemented. I'm going to go ahead and rerun the simulation and see if our controller does a better job. Okay, so now as you can see we have that same thing here where our valve gets saturated. We cannot reach this flow rate of 15 cubic meters per minute. We can only reach our maximum of 10 with the valve 100% open. But then as soon as we make that set point change and we get back down into a controllable range, you can see that our valve responds immediately. So this clamping method 
has proven to be quite effective in this scenario for preventing problems that can happen by controller windup.